I told you you cannot ball with us, why would you even try? Right, right, right around with TRD, ooh, we so shitty Sit like nine shots, feel like Curry, but he look like 50 Said he need an eight, but fast, said he want like 50 Homie got a hundred round drum, but he shot like 50 But most of these niggas be cap, 50 not 50 I don't give a fuck about your bitch, she still fuck with me Pull up with a bobby just to serve a bitch, I look like Whitney Hit my G-Town boogie like I'm Mike Finn Before I hit Detroit, I gotta see my granny and Ray See my nigga pop like five perkies, he's a goddamn fiend Maybe it's a Snapchat filter, not Maybelline On the block in the east side like I'm Draymond Green They can't see the elephant in the room Stuck in the bottom of the bay with no life jacket Alright, so today's guest has been on my SoundCloud playlist for about three years now He's been grinding it out ever since With an evolving style And it's hard to catch this, man Young Kells Welcome, man. Hey, what's, what's going on, man? It's Young Kells, a.k.a. Lil Bag. Shout out to Bottom of the Bay. We about to get it going. That's right. All right, man, let's cut to the cake. Your latest release is a collab. Can you tell us a bit about that project? On my last tape, that one was Let Me Hear That. Me and my boy, AC Bo, um, out of Marina, California. You know, that's where I pretty much consider my home in Cali. I'm really from San Antonio, if you know, but... Marina, California, that was the first place where I touched down and really called home in California. So that's just one of my guys from Marina, you know. You know we, he out here really trying to make a name for himself as well. And I see potential in him versus a lot of other people in the area. No offense to anyone else from the 831. There's a lot of great artists and stuff, but, you know, I only choose to work with certain individuals for a reason. And this man, you know, AC Bo. That's one of my dogs from from the jump, but he is just so meticulous and so trying to perfect everything. And that's one thing I like about being in the studio with him because I'm kind of a more of a don't give a fuck, kind of like carefree, like I'm gonna do what I want. You know what I'm saying? So when that nigga get in the studio with me, he second guessing shit or trying to make sure I do it right or make sure he the best that he can be. When I'm in there like, Nigga, just smoke some weed and drink some liquor and get in there. Like, you, know, you don't got to do too much, but it kind of like balance us both out, you know? He bringing the best out of me, I'm bringing the best out of him. You heard almost every song on there was freestyled, if you didn't know. Oh, shit. We, I didn't know that. We punch in every time we get in the studio. We don't really have anything written or anything. Sometimes I might come up with a bar and like, the car on the ride there to the studio, but besides, like, one or two lines or something, it's usually nothing written. Y'all niggas be having mad bars too, so y'all just be. I swear, and if what we, the we, fuck? And we feed on each other, you know, like you always trying to say the next funniest shit. That's how. It okay, be. I can I can understand how you could think of bars like yeah, that, especially when you in going back and forth how we did on several of them tracks. Right. You hear Cuz say something spectacular, you want to say something even more extravagant after you know what I'm right, saying? And he right. 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 When you keep that energy going, that's what makes the song just sound fun. You know, I, think, I'm not, I think right now that's the first time you somebody's made me grasp the concept of that shit. Like that flowing in and out and that, that new type of flow shit. Yeah, because that. that's really, you know, you see it happening all over the, the country, the back and forth type of, type of flows, you know. You see it happen with a lot of times in the Bay. I see it with like SOB and stuff. You yeah. see it in Detroit and Michigan all the time. I see it in you know? Detroit a lot. Exactly. So the back and forth stuff, you know, that stuff, um, it really just, like you said, you ain't bored in the song. You know, a lot of these guys just be rapping for four minutes long, and it just, <laughs> you get bored of it because it's not no structure. When you got a real song, there's structure, so you don't get bored. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Like, there's a chorus. There's a hook. There's a, a bridge. There's a verse. You ain't going to get bored because it's that. When someone just coming at you with bars for bars of just like talking shit, <laughs> you can only take so much talking shit. Like I want to hear another nigga voice or another nigga flow, or you right, know what I'm saying. Right. So that's why the back and forth with the shit talking goes so well and well, or hand to hand, I should say. Okay, all right, man. So as of recently, we noticed that you frequent Southern California. Any specific reasoning for that? Um, I'm just um, I, I really like Southern California because I feel like um, a lot more opportunity out here. You know, I feel like the Bay Area is a very, very nice place to live. It's a very, very nice place to be. It's a very, very nice place to get going, especially if you're from there. If you're from there, you can't ever leave where you're from, you know. And I started this real music stuff in my roots in San Jose. So I'll never forget the Bay. I'll never forget San Jose. But at the end of the day, I feel like the resources there are not something suited for what I want to do with my, with my life and my career. 
And there's nothing against that. I got people that I could go to in San Jose to this day if I wanted to go make music or wanted to go make some plays. I could go and tap into this day. But at the end of the day, I'm for Team Kells. <clears throat> you know what I'm right. saying? I'm for my movement. And my movement needed a bigger base, a bigger surrounding, you know. And I love this Los Angeles area, this Southern California area. And I'm trying to branch out bigger and more. You feel me? Because right. once I went from the Bay to L.A., I'm take, trying to take over this state. Now I'm going to try to go across the country with it. And then after that, I'm trying to go across the globe with it. And we never know. We're trying to go to Mars and perform. You feel me? You're trying to do some crazy stuff, though. So it's like, can't just keep keep your stuff in a in a box. That's right. So you feel me? that's the main reason why I kind of wanted to go to SoCal Branch Out. Because I'm not from SoCal. I never lived in SoCal until about a few months ago. But huh. I got a lot of people out here. And I got a lot of connections out here. And I know that if I do what I need to do, I can make myself successful. Okay, that's what's up, man. So, who are some of your musical influences? Musical influences? When you say like of all time, let's yeah, like your personal favorite. Personal favorite, like my influence. You know, I can't do nothing without Lil Wayne. Okay. You know, I, I Lil Wayne probably, in my opinion, the best rapper alive, and probably the best to ever do it. Um, you know, he just can't. The Carters, all five of them, you know, how can you debate the lineage, you know, the greatness of, without Lil Wayne, I wouldn't be where I am today for sure. Um, I'm very influenced by the people I make music with, because I like to make music with the people who I'm listening to, or who I'm slapping, because I feel like that's going to put me to where they are, and I, like, not like in a jealous way, but like, you know, I could do that, you know what I'm saying, kind of like in a motivating way, like. I could do what he doing. I just did a song with him, you know? So a lot of the people I have on my last few projects, like Shitty Boys, you know? Those are some of the guys where I feel like they go into the booth and they say whatever the fuck comes to their mind. You know, they talk that shit. Um, I really fuck with what they got going, you know? Some people like Rio, the young OG, RMC Mike. You know, okay. those guys is going crazy right now, you know? just It's just the... And it's not necessarily how they rapping, but it's um, it's what they they rap about, right? You know what I'm saying? Like it's just they, everyone has their own different flow out of that area in the Michigan area right now. But they all talking crazy. They all talking crazy. Sada baby, he got a different flow than all of them. Talking crazy. Pac Man, Fat Boy, you know, VFB the Pac Man, he talking crazy. He got a whole different flow than all them niggas. But he talking crazy though, and that's the thing about it. They just talking crazy and. You don't even know what the fuck is real, what the fuck ain't in that music, nigga, now when you listen to it. Niggas done talked about scamming the Pope. Niggas done talking about running off on their granny. Like, you don't know what's real, what's real. And that's what's fun about it, because it is, at the end of the day, entertainment is music. And you want the, the listener to be to be um, entertained, you know? So that's one of the things, when those guys get on the mic, like, if I hear a new crazy spicy song, like, niggas talking the craziest shit, that make me want to go say the craziest shit ever, you know? Because niggas be saying the craziest shit, bro. And then niggas tell me that I say the craziest shit. So I know when, like, if they say it, I'm saying some shit. I'm like, these niggas is on 12 times different levels than me. So Okay. All right, man. So we first caught wind of you on SoundCloud about two years ago on a track named A Day Ago. Were you releasing music before that? Yeah, so that was one. I would say... Um, I was releasing music before that for sure. Uh, for sure. A few years ago, I linked up with Kells. Shout out to my boy Splash Kells. It's crazy because niggas used to confuse me for Kells. Because I wasn't confused, no, but no, no, I not. did notice y'all niggas had the yeah. same spelling, though. Niggas, niggas, niggas would hear, like, I'm with my nigga Kells. They go, oh, you with Splash? I'm like, nah, nigga, I'm with my little nigga Kells. Little, young Kells, little, little nigga Kells. I'm like, I remember when I first met this nigga, I did not know who he was a day in my life. I didn't know who Cuz was. I knew his peoples. I knew a lot of the niggas around him. I don't know him either personally. I just know I heard that song, and I was like, what the fuck is this? So so this nigga Kells, he told me the first time I ever met him, I put that on everything I love. Shout out to Kells. The first time I ever met this nigga at Liquid, he came up to me and said, 
Bro, your name Kales, nigga. My name Kales. I've been looking for you, Kales. I need a song, you and me, both on the same song, nigga. Kales times Kales, whatever, is going to be Kales and Kales. Y'all did And that. it was the first time I ever met her. I didn't even know because from a can of paint, you know what I'm saying? From a bag of chips. Because was looking like, like a genuine guy from the first time I met him. He brought me to his other homie, June House. Okay. So he brought me to June House, introduced me to June. Who was June? June. That day, June? Yeah, June. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. You he recorded out. the song for us. I didn't I know that. It, I don't think it was his beat, but he recorded the song for us. So That's I go, right. so I meet up with Kells to do the song. I come in there. He already got his shit done. He ready. He's like, I need you on this verse right here at this time and punch in. I'll do whatever. I pull up on them. We do the song, right? This nigga say the song so damn hard. He's trying to beat the song. Go crazy. Y'all heard the song if you haven't. He gonna put a link somewhere to the song because y'all niggas need to hear yeah, this. Yeah, I'm one. right. Because this that one, was, shit bang. this one, one of my biggest ones in the city for sure. But my boy Fats, shout out to my boy Fats. This is one being my boy Fats was first coming up. This is actually the first video Fats ever did for me. Uh. Fats posted on like Instagram or something, some crazy deal. Like I'm talking like he said something like 250 for a video right now. Mm. Who first nigga to hit me get it? Kells text me like this your boy just dropped 50. I got 200. Uh, and I swear to God, just like that, he huh? He said you got fifty, I got two hundred, and I can't be no chimmy nigga when the nigga said he got two hundred for the video. Do I got fifty? I can't be no chimmy nigga. So you feel me? I had to get my little allowance. You know, I was in college still, but you know, getting my little lunch money together, trying to make sure Fats got us. And we shot the video right there up um, downtown by the Deer Non in the in the Shark Tank. Okay, you know. Um, Kells put all the video stuff together. You know, he coordinated it very well. Shout out to Kells. He was very, he coordinated the video very well. He told niggas specifically, if you ain't wearing black, you ain't in my video. <laughs> niggas had to change the outfit. Niggas had to be ready because he said, told niggas, if you ain't in black, you ain't in my video. I don't care if you, the other nigga Kells. <laughs> you know right. I mean? So we had to, the coordination was there, you know. Shout out to all the people who pulled up to the video. But yeah, that was, um. That wasn't my first song, but I want to say that's probably the first time that the streets of San Jose knew who Young Kells was. Okay. That's what I was saying. All right. And the second part of that question was, were you releasing music before that? Yeah, I was releasing music before that for sure. I had my, my SoundCloud going crazy. I was... Uh, Let, let's put a date on that. About when do you think you started? I know exactly when I dropped my first... My first mixtape. I dropped my first mixtape July fifth, two thousand fifteen, the day I graduated from high school. Oh, okay. So that was about six years ago. Yeah, then. that was the first mixtape I officially dropped on um, SoundCloud. Okay, that's it what's was up, called man. Kellogg's back. I, I produced some of them songs, but none of them shits was up to par. You know, everyone says they they first shit wasn't nothing crazy, but it was just um, a moment. You know. But that's a moment I'll never forget. I know the date to this day when I dropped my first mixtape. I can tell you, I don't know when I dropped some of them other tapes that was way better and had way more views and way more popping in all the videos and shit. It's our best but shit. I remember the first tape I dropped, July 5th, 2015, the day I graduated high school on SoundCloud. Okay. And I told myself, like, as long as I'm having fun, I ain't gonna stop. It might get expensive, but as long as I'm having fun, I don't think I need to stop. I feel like music right now, it ain't, it ain't really affecting me in a negative way, so I don't think I need to stop. All right, let me piggyback off that. So, Fats, how did y'all two link up, and are you two going to work together in the future? Oh, me and Fats, we ain't never going to stop working. That's my brother for life. Fats, um, if you don't know Fats, my boy Fats, he also goes by Envision by Fats. Um, cameraman, he also got his own weed strain as well with the jokes up. So shout out to, to all that, but shout out, that's it. Um, for the camera stuff, that's what he really get known for, you know. And that stuff, I met Fat through through, through um, I met Fat through just a friend of a friend, you know. They were, he was in a fraternity at San Jose State, and I was just, I think I was working with one of his frat brothers, and his frat brother that I work with didn't smoke weed. Uh -huh. But that nigga smoke weed, you know what I'm saying? You know how stoners is. Them niggas don't want to smoke weed by themselves. They want, they want to smoke two blunts with two niggas. You know what yeah. I mean? Them niggas want to be trying to branch out. We don't want to be by ourselves. At least me. I'm not the loner stoner, you know? Okay. So 
he introduced me to Fats and like, yeah, this is my, my roommate's big brother. This is my guy. He also shoots music videos. You make music, like, you, you got to fuck with him. Like, smoke weed with him. You feel me? I don't smoke weed with him. You can get drunk with me, but no, I'm about to be over here. So, I'm smoking weed with bro. Find out he's shooting video for some of my niggas. I pull up with him to the video shoot. And I'm doing the same shit at that video that I would normally do at any video, you know, with Fats. You've seen me working with Fats at videos. I'm like his right-hand man at some of them videos, you know? Right. So, from then, from that moment on, I already knew that was my bro, you know? I already knew from that point on, that was my bro. I couldn't, I couldn't put it no other way, you feel me? I never even thought anything else about it. I just knew that, first off, cuz smoke weed. I'm always over at this frat house. I need to smoke weed with somebody. Right. Second off, cuz you videos, I make music. Hello. You know what I'm saying? And this third of all, it was just... Niggas just was really on the same mindset, you know? We both going to school for something that we ain't really doing right now. Which is kind of weird to think about at the time, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. So, I didn't go to school for show for no music stuff. And Fat didn't go to school for no videography or to be a filmer, you know what I'm saying? But it just makes sense right now. Okay. But then you said, do we have stuff coming? Yeah. I got videos in the vault with Fat that I don't even know are going to ever come out. I got videos that we need to drop tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We got videos. We got so many ideas. We keep working so much. It's really just, we have our whole media group, Envision Media Group, EMG. And so we got so many different projects and ideas coming out to where we really just focusing on getting just, getting just, just getting held down as our, as our own intensity as our own entity i should say right so we could just be able to maneuver by ourselves so you know how hard it is to be by yourself and be independent and doing it from the ground up but it just feels so much meaningful when you do it that way it feels more it's like you're doing it the right way versus opting out and going the easy cheat code way like working for 40 years and getting retirement but your back is going up yeah all right man so do you ever feel like quitting music honestly why or why not? Have I ever felt like quitting music? No. Do you do you feel like quitting music? Like currently? Oh, currently? Like do I now? Feel like ever? Quitting music right now? I don't feel like quitting music right now. Personally, I think that I've started to, you know, I'm I'm not an expert on this music shit. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like out of the amount of years I put in, I'm starting to find out who I really am as an artist. Right. You know, at first, I always used to feel myself trying to be like someone else, if that makes sense. I always like, you know, and it happens to probably a lot of artists in general, but I used to hear a new artist on the radio, and I'm thinking, like, I got to make a song like that. I used to be the king of the type beats. You know what I'm saying? You go on yeah. YouTube and search, like, Soldier Boy type beat, or you go on YouTube and search Wale type beat or whatever. I used to be the king of the type beats. It didn't matter who it was, I'm just searching a new artist type beat. Like when Lil Yachty first came out, niggas was all Shout over out to Lil, Lil Yachty. Yachty That's my nigga still though. Yeah. I fuck with Yachty. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like the type beat era, that's what kind of, I think, helped and hurt us as artists. Because it's- Wait, like, wait, wait, wait. What you mean by that though? Like it helped us, because you know I mean? I feel like during this era, beats are so easy to come by. As in, whereas if, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't in the game, nothing like that, in 2010. Mm-hmm. But I assume it was harder to find a beat in 2010 than it is in 2021. Correct. You know, because I, I wasn't in the game like that back then, so I wouldn't know. But you can search any type. Of, you could get a beat right now on your phone and download it to your phone and send it to your engineer, and he'll pull it up, and you can rap it. The reason I'm asking so much on this is because I do notice that a lot of rappers have the same beat. Yeah. Rappers ain't... I mean, is that a is that an issue or? I personally don't know if it's an issue. I think that it's definitely something to talk about. If a rapper rap on the same beat that I got, and I think that I went my way to get the beat the right way, then I'm gonna be tripping. Right. Because I'm not gonna sit here and pay for a beat the way I'm supposed to pay for it. Be obviously there's differences between buying exclusive rights and leases and stuff like that. But if I go out and buy, let's say the exclusive rights to a beat, like that's how I was taught to do it the right way. Correct. Go and buy the exclusive rights. And if someone else do something with that beat, then that's, they ask, <laughs> you know what so. I'm saying? 
And but nowadays with YouTube and motherfucking SoundCloud and it, like all the downloading you can do and stuff, motherfuckers make remixes to Drake songs the night they drop. So type beats is more like like uh, mixtape shits. Well, no, well, like everybody just kind of use them type thing, right? Well, no, well a type beat the way it's, it's called a type beat because it'll be like the example I use was like a little yachty type beat. So it's the producer, I know, but like they'll put it up and like. Hella people can use that. Oh yeah, same so, so say, beat, they'll, right? say they'll upload that shit to SoundCloud or mainly to YouTube. Right. YouTube's the easiest platform to do that. So they'll put the beat on YouTube and say that beat. If I'm on YouTube looking it, because you know I used to look for beats back in the day, and we all starts from the bottom. You know, right. I'm looking on YouTube for beats back in the day, and the first thing I could think about when I'm looking at beats off the top is um um how many views does it have? If the beat got more than a like 5k 10,000 views I already know how many niggas done made a song to it right. not everyone that listened to it made a song but a few of them probably did True. you know what I'm saying so what happens if you like damn this beats fire 2 million hits <laughs> how right, many man. niggas you think done made they SoundCloud <laughs> version of that beat niggas yeah. 12,000 niggas done dropped that song I'm cool I'm, and, I'll and be I hearing this shit on niggas album and yeah. shit bro I'll be, I'll be like confused but the, you know. the worst thing I remember back in the day, and I have songs like this, but it's purchase your tracks today. That is the worst shit that you can Damn. have on your beat. That's how a nigga know your shit is not official. Your shit's not legit. It might be good. Just because it's not official and legit does not mean you're not good. That's one of the biggest contradictions is that niggas confuse, Ill- um, or niggas confuse unofficial with not good. There's a lot of unofficial niggas that is really good, but they is unofficial, so they ain't ever going to get to where they need to be or should be. And that's the biggest thing. That's the difference. Motherfuckers who is officials can be terrible, but they official. And how can you debate it? You can't debate official. If they got their shit together, they paperwork right, you know, they they uh, ASCAB, you know, they copyrights, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Because a lot of these people is just out here posting shit on YouTube and SoundCloud. And okay. niggas done found a cheat code to put their shit on Apple Music. And now they think just because they shit on Apple Music, they official. It's true. All right, man. So the next question is called Put It In The Universe. If you can have a one-hour conversation with any female entrepreneur, who would that be? Any female entrepreneur? Oh, that is a good question, man. Any female entrepreneur? You know what sucks is I don't even know too many female entrepreneurs off the top of my head to really can, like think about that one tough. But if I had to choose one, I would probably have to say Oprah Winfrey. There you go. Um, you know, I'm not too sure what we would talk about at first, but I know at the end of that hour is going to be something meaningful said. Well, you said that you was a business guy, so I'm sure you can conjure oh, yeah, up some business sure. questions for her in um, an hour. I really, um, what I would really ask her is... Um, the success of um, longevity. Okay. That's one of the biggest things, you know, because once you've reached a, a certain amount of years, and it depends differently for each um, job or career, what that number of years is. But once you reach a certain amount of years, you're considered a vet. You know? Mm-hmm. So, I want to know how, how do you become a vet and still be one of the top at your position? That's a good-ass question. All right, man. So this is the last one, bro. So who is the ugliest friend that you have? The ugliest friend that I have? Damn. That's a funny-ass question, bro. Who's the ugliest friend that I have? Ooh. Ha! You know, they say if you got no ugly friends, you the ugly friend. So I'm thinking, am I the ugly friend right now? <laughs> I'm thinking that right now. God damn, man. Oh, I'm dying over here. I don't want to put none of my niggas on the spot right now. So I'm going to say I'm the ugly friend. That's funny. I'm the ugly You going to pick yourself. All right, man. That's <laughs> right. That's right. All right. So that about wraps up this segment of Bottom of the Bay. You want to give everybody your social so they'll know where to find you at? You can find me on... SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Young Kells Low Bag. You can find me on YouTube, Young Kells. That's Y U N G K E L L Z. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Twitter. I'm on PlayStation. 
killing this raw. You feel me? I be playing 2K and Madden sometimes the Fortnite too. So get at me. Um, I got a lot of music out right now, but like my latest stuff we was talking about earlier. Let me hear that. Young Kells and AC Bo collab mixtape. We got about seven tracks up there. Straight shit talk, straight fire. I swear to God. Um, some new stuff on the way for show and just. Just holla at your boy. You think I'm not too hard to find if you're looking for me. Hey. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on Bottom of the Bay TV. And uh, keep grinding, my nigga. Keep spitting them crazy-ass bars. <laughs> and just putting that game out there to these youngsters, bro. Hey, and them visuals is fucking sick, too, hey, dog. Hey, I'm trying to do something different. That's what I'm trying to do. All right, man. Peace. <laughs>